Hey guys, happy Halloween. It is October 31st, 2020. Yes! This is going to be the final horror movie review for October. Did a talked about a movie every night this month in 2020. And we're going to talk about what I think is the greatest horror movie of all time, The Exorcist. And I have this double blu-ray special edition it's beautiful collector's edition of this and i just got done watching it and i chose to watch the theatrical version so the two discs are one is a theatrical version and the other is the director's cut and i have seen i think i've seen both but i don't know if i originally watched the director's cut or what um, but I used to have the DVD, and it's like the Never Seen Before edition. And uh, I might have watched the theatrical one first and then watched that. I, I don't know. It might have both cuts on that, too. Anyways, there's like 10 minutes of footage that's on the director's cut. And uh, some of that's really good. I mean, they're both good. And I kind of got on to Reddit, and I was like, you know, I was like, I want to watch this. I wanted this to be the last movie. And I got the popcorn ready and everything. I'm going to watch it. And then I'm like, okay, oh yeah, like which one should I watch? <laughs> like the director's cut or the original? Like which one do I want to do? And so I got on Reddit and I'm like, you know, which is, what What do people prefer generally, you know? And they're kind of split. Like some people say the director's cut. Some people say the original theatrical. And I know one of the big things about the director walk down the stairs, um, which is a really creepy scene where they had this... Uh, contortionist or whatever this lady as regan who's demon possessed like walk like this like down the stairs like upside down to where her fingers and toes are like barely touching the stairs and she's like hovering and uh, looking all creepy and stuff it's a creepy scene but i also kind of don't like it because I don't like the fact that Regan leaves her room because most of the scene, you know, most of the movie, you know, is just Ra Regan demon possessed in her bedroom. And I don't like the idea that she leaves the room personally, but there's a lot of other scenes and backstory and stuff. That's like, I said, there's like 10 minutes of footage and there's scenes, I guess, like when she's in the doctor's office and she's like cussing and stuff a lot and, you know, showing her possession there. And I guess there's scenes um, when the priests take a break from the exorcism. They have a little dialogue in between, and that's good. So I have to watch that again to see what I think is the better version. I mean, they're both obviously great. There's the back of this. It actually looks really beautiful. So I don't know if, if somebody who's watched this hasn't seen it. I'm going to give spoilers. And I'm going to probably run through the general plot first, I guess. Um, there's another cool picture in there. It has, like, the demon's face, basically, with the priest. It's awesome. But, um, basically, the opening scene, I've always thought, I mean, it's kind of critical to the story i guess but i've always uh it's always not been my favorite part of it but i guess it's like in iraq or something when it starts off and when we see the title the exorcist we hear allah akbar <laughs> sort some muslim calls to prayer or whatever and uh, because i guess they're like in iraq and there's a catholic priest over there doing like excavations or digging and Somebody finds, like, a little statue head thing, and it's kind of creepy. And we uh, get the idea that somehow it's, like, possessed or something. Like, when the priest gets it, like, it messes him up. Like, I don't remember they said, like, he disappeared for so long or something. And, like, the next thing we notice is he's, like, taking medicine now. Like, I don't know if it's for his heart or his anxiety, but somehow this thing has, like, really messed him up. And we see him walking through the streets, kind of seeing some creepy stuff, just, I don't know, it's just kind of like normal life there, but it's kind of creeping him out, and, uh, I don't know, it, and then it eventually leads him to the statue, 
that's like a full statue and when he approaches it we hear sounds of like a dog and a cat fighting or something or there's like a struggle and uh it's like the statue's like making those noises so it's like very fierce like sound like it's like a dog like attacking a cat or something and then we kind of cut to the later times in georgetown in new york i think and um we're introduced to this mother and her daughter and this mother is like an actress and she has this daughter regan and they're like a, a good i guess the father is off traveling or something i'm not really sure the father but um I'm not sure if the mother's the best mother, if she gets to spend a lot of time with Regan or not, because she's like an actress and stuff, but it seems like she tries to uh, love her daughter when she can, and they're kind of a happy family in a way, and here's another possession, uh, scariest films of all time. Those eyes, the pure white eyes, that are... we'll get to that later, but... I'm just looking at this as I'm talking, so it's distracting me. Anyway, um, so they're all happy and stuff, and the mother starts hearing kind of noises coming from the attic, and kind of wondering what that's about, but we get to a scene basically where Regan is talking, or using a... Um, Ouija board, which is something I've never messed with, and I don't know why, but I guess I've just never been interested. I've heard a lot of stories, you know, people, family, and friends that have played with them and stuff, and they, you know, say spooky stuff happened or whatever, and lots of people think that they're possessed and they're tools of the devil and everything, but, you know, the whole purpose is to, like, to talk to the dead or to talk to spirits, but I don't know. I was never really interested in it, I guess. I don't know. Um, but yeah, she, her mom finds a Ouija board and she's like, what, what's this? And she's like, oh, you know, I've been using it and I, I use it to talk to, uh, Mr. Howdy, she says. And she's like, do you want me to show you how I use it or whatever? And the mother's like, yeah, they're just having good old mother daughter Ouija board time. <laughs> Well, Reagan tries to, well, first when her mother tries to grab it, it, like, pulls away from her, and, like, she thinks that Regan did it or something, but, like, it, like, moves by itself, and, and Regan's like, well, like, I'll talk to Mr. Howdy or whatever, she's like, Mr. Howdy, do you think that my mom is beautiful or something like that, and, like, it doesn't move, and so she's like, that's not nice, Mr. Howdy. Well... Basically, there's a, uh, you know, I know I'm going to skip a lot of little details and stuff, and I'm kind of jumping all over the place, but I guess, you know, there's a director of this movie that her mom is involved with, and I think that she might be kind of romantically involved somehow with the director or something. I don't know. But, anyway, they have, like, a big party at her house, and... She ends up, there's like tons of people in the house, and Regan ends up like walking in while they're like playing on the piano or whatever, and she like urinates on the floor, <laughs> and um, then she tells like the director guy or whoever that they're going to die up there. She's like, you're going to die up there, and her mother's like, what? Like... She's like, oh, honey, like, you, you, she's like, she's been sick or whatever, so she takes her to the bath, and she cleans her up, and she's like, why would you act like this, or why would you say this, and, uh, she's being, like, loving, she's not, like, pissed off, or like, why, why the fuck did you piss on the fucking carpet in front of everybody, like, tell him that he's gonna die, what the hell's wrong with you, that's probably what anybody's parent would do, <laughs> no. But, um, you know, she's being a loving mother, and anyway, we're also introduced at some point to this other priest character, and, um, this priest has, uh, his mother, and, uh, she's old and, and dying, sick, I guess, and 
I guess, I think he, like, moves away. Like, we see him with her, and I don't know if he moves away or he's taking on another job or something. Later on, she basically ends up having to go to, like, the hospital living on, and, um, you know, she's like, why would you leave me here, like, in this kind of mental hospital, and... And he's talking to a friend, and his friend's like, what are you going to do? Like, basically have her, like, in a high-quality nursing home or something? He's like, you don't have the money for that, basically. And so he has a lot of guilt for his mother being lonely and stuff, which I can kind of um, relate to, you know, maybe some of his feelings on that. But, you know... Um, so I really love this priest character, um, and that's the thing about this movie, as I'm just telling the story, I'll just throw it out there, that the acting is really good in all this, but, like, the characters are really good, and, like, pretty much all the characters in the matter, and we kind of get a little bit of the feeling and backstory for each, like, each character is, like, fleshed out. Um, let's see, here's another, I'm not Regan, I'm the devil. It's her... Um, so, after the whole pissing on the floor incident with her daughter, um, the director guy ends up dying, uh, falling down the stairs and, like, breaking his neck or something, this, this long stairwell that's outside of their house. And, like I said, I might be getting the placement of stuff out of order or whatever. But anyways, just because, you know, she predicted that, you know, she said, you're going to die up there. Well, he does die. And so when the mother finds out, like I said, not only was he, like, her boss, but she might have been, like, romantically involved with him and stuff. And so she's, like, horrified when she hears this news. Um, there ends up being, like, a detective on the case, like, trying to find out what happened. And... Well, like I said, with, with the sound coming from the attic also, there, she eventually wanders up into the attic. The mother does. She opens up the attic. And um, I don't remember if there's a statue up there or something, but basically I think we get the idea that maybe she released something evil from the attic, maybe. Um, another scene from the movie. Towards the end of the movie, when both priests are there. I'm going to get ready to perform the exorcism. Or in the middle of it, I don't know. The mother, Ellen Burstyn, is the actress's name. She does a great job as Regan's mother. Um, but, also, um, there ends up being a scene where the mother, after she lays her in bed or whatever, what is it? I think it's like after the party, before they know like the, that the guy's dead, um, they're like cleaning up the carpet or whatever, and then she like turns around, and then Regan's like screaming, and like her bed's like jumping up and down. She's like, "Make it stop! Make it stop! Make it stop!" So her mom like jumps on in the bed with her and. And uh, at that point, I'd be, like, freaking the hell out because, like, what she ends up doing is she takes Regan to the doctor and stuff because she thinks something's wrong with Regan. It's like, okay, what about the bed, like, jumping up and down? <laughs> There's something else obviously going on there. It's not just Regan. But she takes her to the doctor, and uh, they start running, like, brain scans on her and stuff. But I one thing that I want to, I'm going to go ahead and get to the point because I think this is when I really realized this, that one of the effective things about this movie is that through all, a lot of these scenes, or maybe all of them, pretty much, there's no, like, music playing. Like, when the bed's shaking and she's screaming and stuff, it's just, like, straight, you're just getting it, like, straight as it is. It's not, there's no, like, creepy music, like, oh, here's the creepy part. Like, no, it just goes right into it. And it's, like, it's it makes it more, like, real, like, there's nothing wrong with the music and stuff like that in movies, you know, it can give you a, a creepy vibe, or it just sounds really cool, or, you know, it gets you pumped up, or whatever, or it makes you sad, or happy. But there's also 
good in silence. Like when you just get the film and you just get what's getting what's happening. And I think that that's something that's effective about this. But I gotta say that I love the and I'm kind of biased. It also kind of reminds me of Goblin and some of the work like in the songs in Dario Argento's movies. But you know, it also probably reminds a lot of people of like the Halloween song a little bit. They're both very iconic, but I think that the Exorcist theme song it has the bells and it's a lot more fuller song. I just love the Exorcist theme song. That plays in the movie, like when her mom's like leaving a set or something, or her mom's on the way home, you know, before the action really starts with the demonic possession stuff. Um, and I think you see that in the trailer when she does go into the attic. I think she might have like a she has like a what a candle or a, is it a candle that she's trying to see with or something, and then it like kind of goes up in flames. So yeah, we get the idea that like something evil's going on in the attic. And that, you know, everything happens kind of like after she releases that, but I was sitting on my feet, so I was starting to, start, my feet are starting to die there. Her daughter is Linda Blair, is the actress. Yeah, there's the normal happy Regan, there's the I'm the devil Regan. Quite the transformation. <laughs> Another thing I will say is that the effects in this movie are all really good, I think, and they're all very effective. The one effect that I think, um, you know, excluding, like, the director's cut, because I didn't watch that one this time, the one effect that I was kind of like, eh, on was, like, when she spits out the pea soup, like, in the projectile, like, on the priest. <laughs> it's like a stream of the spit. Because you can tell that's, like, computer animated, I'm pretty sure, I mean... Maybe even, maybe it's not, but it just, it's look, it looks like, eh, it's not like terrible, but I mean, compared to everything else, that's probably the lowest thing, but there's lots of things, there's like a scene, like towards the end where she's levitating and the priest like throws the holy water and like it slashes her leg, like that looks great, like the stuff that's moving in the room, like that all looks great, like the effects on her makeup and stuff, that looks great. So, I know I'm jumping all over the place again, but I just wanted to mention that because it's awesome where we get the scenes without the music. It's awesome with the effects. Like, they're still, they still stand up. And here's the priest, Jason Miller, which is a big part of the movie to me. Anyways, she's taking Regan to the doctor after the thrashing about basically they basically do brain scans and stuff and they basically see that she's normal and that they can't find anything wrong with her um there's more scenes with the daughter in the bedroom they basically like keep her in the bedroom um she just says different things to the mother there's a lot of sexual things in this movie um, where the demon uses Regan to say sexual things. But she basically keeps taking her back to the doctors. They want to do more scans. They don't find anything wrong. And they end up, like, saying, you know, taking her, like, psychologists. And they're basically not really finding anything wrong. And the mother, over time, you see how she gets more depressed and it starts affecting her more, taking her to a dark place. And uh, there's a scene where just the, she goes up to help Regan or whatever, and the door closes. And stuff starts moving around the room. And there's like a big dresser, like chess thing that just comes, <laughs> just comes right at the mom. It's coming like full speed, like a train. It's so ridiculous. Some of the stuff, some of the effects and stuff that happens in this movie is like ridiculous. It's like over the top. It's like way over the top. But it's done well. And so, I mean, it's still great. Um, but there are things still that creep me out about this movie a lot. I mean, and it gave me goosebumps, like, certain times watching it. I was watching it alone in the dark with headphones on. Um, <coughs> so, I think a cool thing about the priest is we see that he is... Um, you know, he's a priest, he's supposed to be, you know, he's a Catholic, but he's supposed to be, like, a Christian, he's supposed to be a believer in God, 
but he's having these struggles in life with his mother dying and like him not being able, maybe able to be there for her or provide the care that he wants to for her. And, you know, he like smokes and drinks and stuff. He's got his own demons. It seems like a lot of the Catholic priests in here smoke and stuff. So maybe that's nothing. I don't know. But basically he's got his demons and he's got his guilt and everything that he feels and his sorrow and, you know, there's a point in the movie where he says that I feel like I've lost the faith. And, um, anyway, so he's a very interesting character. Here is the, the priest at the beginning of the movie who finds the statues and stuff, Max von Sydow. And he, that's a, I made that with a marker on my finger on accident earlier <laughs> at work. But he ends up coming to help the other priest at the end for the exorcist because uh, this priest has to go to like the council, the Catholics, the hierarchy and everything and ask their permission to perform an exorcism. And they think he doesn't have enough experience or whatever. So they call on this other guy who's been experienced in doing him. Uh, um, here's Regan thrashing about. There's just lots of scenes with Regan. Um, and there's the scene, you know, where her head spins, like, completely around. Uh, there's a couple scenes like that. And it's like, how's that possible? Like, she'd be dead, like, if her neck snapped, right? I was thinking, though, maybe, like, it's in the realm of the demon is making people, like, visualize this or hallucinate it like it's not really happening it's just the demon just messing with people's heads maybe that's it i don't know but obviously if her head was spinning around then it would snap so oh william peter blatty is that the uh <coughs> screenwriter now this is the director william fredkin friedkin <laughs> I don't know anything else about him, really. Somebody said that Marathon Man is, like, one of his best movies, maybe compared to The Exorcist, but I just know that I love The Exorcist. Here's Regan in the hospital getting some tests. <coughs> and, you know, they use uh, medicine to knock her out, basically, when she's freaking out. There's a priest performing The Exorcist. They have that bed, like, all padded. I guess so Regan doesn't hurt herself. I never thought about that until just now. Why it's covered like that. I guess that makes sense. They have her tied down to the bed. So yeah, the head spinning and stuff, it's not really logical, but, you know, who cares? It's creepy. And, uh, I remember <coughs> when I was a kid, one of my friend's mom saying that they wa he w she watched this movie and she was always afraid of, like, walking into her daughter's room and her daughter doing this or something, so... This movie um, can get to you in a lot of different mothers or fathers, parents who have children. They might have a fear after watching this, like, oh, what if my kid gets demon-possessed? So they take her to the doctor. They take her to the psychiatrist and stuff. Basically, they all say there's nothing wrong with her, and, like, they end up leading her to, to get a priest. And, well, the psychiatrist is like, well, sometimes people think that they're possessed, and since they think that, they're, like, fully believe that. So, like, they kind of make it a reality for themselves. So, like, if you get someone to perform an exorcism or something, then then they'll believe that, too. And then it'll, it'll bring them out of it. So, the saying, he's trying to say, you know, it's not really real that she's really possessed. It's just in her mind. And then if we get it in her mind that she gets exercised, then, then it'll be real. But... Um, somehow her mom ends up coming across the priest that we see, and, like, his mother ends up dying, and, uh, the mother just ends up begging him, basically, to come and to do it, and he's all like, you know, I don't know, he's like, what you need is to put her in the hospital for, like, six months, you, you know, just take her to a psychiatrist, she's like, I've done that, I've done that, like, you, you gotta believe me, like, they sent me to you, and now you're sending me back to them. As I said about the mother, like, getting more depressed and dark over time with her daughter, we see eventually at, at a point where 
she's she's like covered up like wearing a headband like a scarf or whatever you want to say on her head a head covering and she's kind of like you know she's wearing like a long jacket or whatever and she's kind of and then like later on you know she's wearing like sunglasses and stuff so she's like all covered up and she's like you see kind of like her face like her eyes have like bags under them or like you know she's she's in distress like really uh really far you can so the acting is great and just you know how you can feel for the transformation and then the transformation with regan is insane because you know she goes from this girl to this demon and her skin is just like hard and torn and discolored and her eyes are discolored and changed and Uh, so she gets to him and he struggled. He says, you know, to do an exorcism, the church has to approve of it. We have to catch her speaking in a foreign language as she hasn't been taught and all this and that. And I don't know. And he goes up there and has like his first interaction with her. And these are pretty awesome, powerful scenes where it's just like the priest and her like in the room alone. And, um, you know, she's using different voices and stuff. There was a time he got off the subway and there was a homeless person or something said, a priest, like you, you care to help an old altar boy or whatever, like he wanted some change or something. And the priest just kind of left him and, um, she uses that voice and, uh, she ends up saying like, your mother's here with me. Like you want me to leave a message for her? <laughs> and he's like, well, if you, uh, if you know my mother or whatever, why don't you uh, say her maiden name? And, and she wouldn't. And then, like, as he was leaving, you know, he, he kind of didn't believe that she needed an exorcism or whatever. But as he was leaving, he was talking to the mother. And he's like, did you know that my mother recently died and stuff? And she's like, yeah. He's like, well, did Regan know that my mother died? And she's like, no. Like, there's no reason why she should know that. And he's like, okay. It's like, not a big deal. Like, whatever. Um, so he's kind of starting to piece things together, but he ends up recording her voice and then recording like a conversation with her and like seeing if she'll speak in a, in a foreign language and she makes like a drawer pop out and he's like, did you just do that? And she's like, yeah, basically. And he's like, do it again. And she's like, in time, in time. He's like, do it again <laughs> in time. Um. So when Regan's speaking and crying out or whatever, you, you there's like layers of voice. There's like moaning and stuff. Like, ah, ah. <laughs> like it's all like layered over top of each other. He ends up playing this back and there's the, like a language expert or something listening. He's like, have you ever heard that language? Or something? He's like, yeah, it's English. It's just like in reverse. And so um, they play that. Yeah. During the exorcism, there's a scene where she uh, stands like in the light and in the window with her hands, and then you see that the priest like sees that statue that he saw in Iraq, kind of piecing it together that that, that demon is inside of her or whatever. Well, they do end up, they end up do getting a, um, exorcism and like I said, they get this other guy with them that we see at the beginning and it's pretty cool. Like as he prepares for the exorcism, he's like, he's like, you know, the devil's a liar, like all that they're going to try to lie and, and, but they'll sprinkle like truth with lies. So don't believe like anything they say or whatever. And, um, as they're going up the stairs, the, the younger priest is like, he was also a psychiatrist and He's like, well, I want to tell you that I've noticed like three different personalities from Regan or something. And the older priest is like, no, there's only one. And then like, they, they just go forward. 
So the priest, the older priest is like fully convinced, you know, that this is real and he's totally a believer in God and everything. He has the faith and the other one's kind of struggling with the faith. Well, a cool thing about this movie, I guess, in this, at the end scene or whatever, they filmed it like in an ice box or something, basically, because you can see the breath coming out of the actor's mouths. It's like totally cold in there. So it's like this demon and this exorcism has totally taken over the whole like room is, has changed. And it's just so cool, like, everything that just happens in that room. And here's Regan levitating. That's the part where he says, the power of Christ compels you, and he splashes the holy water, and it, like, slashes her leg. And then, uh, you know, she's hovering. And then that's, like, when she opens her eyes, and her eyes are, like, pure white. Because normally they're not always white. Like, they're, like, green or weird looking. But then they turn, like, pure white. And they're like glowing like why it's creepy <clears throat> well while they're doing the exorcism she starts using the voice of the one guy's dead mother and she's like well, why did you leave me here and stuff and trying to make him bring up that guilt and he's like you're not my mother he's like you're not my mother he freaks out it really gets into his mind and he uh so the other priest is like, take a break or whatever. They leave. Uh, we see the older priest take the medicine like he was taking at the beginning, and then he goes back in. He's like, I'm going to go back. And um, so the other priest is praying. He goes back to continue the exorcism on Regan. Well, the old priest ends up dying. We don't see it, but the young priest goes back up there. He sees him dead. He's like on the bed or whatever, and then he goes up and like touches him, and like the he falls back like dead. And then like this little vial thing of holy water is like leaking. It's like busted on the floor. And uh, Regan's kind of like sitting in the corner, like laughing. And the priest grabs a hold of her and starts punching her. <laughs> He's like, get into me, like, take me over the girl, you bastard, like, choking her, and so, um, eventually the demon does go into him, and we see, like, his eyes change and stuff, and he looks at the window, and he jumps, he's like, no, and he, like, overcomes it, and he jumps out the window, and he rolls, like, brutally down those long steps, and then to a bloody death at the bottom. A, uh... Another priest that was in the movie earlier at the party comes up and, you know, says, like, you're forgiven of your sins or whatever, and, you know, you're about to meet the Lord, basically. Self, basically, for the girl. And in the end, they're moving out of that house, saying Regan is normal, and her mother's like, she doesn't remember anything. Then the last priest that's living goes up to the stairs and looks at it, and that's about the end. So, I know that was all over the place, but man, there's just so much that's great about this movie. When this priest arrives in the taxi, in the fog, to the house, right here on the front, that is such an awesome scene. The priest is coming for the exorcism in that New York town and Georgetown. It's just awesome Cine cinematography, I guess. So here's the priest's dead mom. Um, and so that's another case, I guess, for Regan messing with their mind, because she actually just appears as his mother for a while. So, I mean, that, that actually didn't happen. So I'm guessing, like, the head turning... One, cre one scene that I did think was really creepy and kind of effective is when the older priest is performing the exorcism on her and um, he puts his hand on her head basically as he's praying or whatever and there's no pictures of it or anything but like you know he's up there and he puts his hand on her head and her face is facing the camera and her eyes you know are all dark and everything 
and her face is all messed up. And there's a lot of scenes where she's spitting out this pea soup or whatever. <coughs> but this is just like, it just starts like flowing from her mouth while he's like praying over her. She's just like, ah, like, it's creepy as hell though. Cause it's just like, oh man, like her face is just, ugh. Nasty. Now there's a scene earlier, like when the the priest goes, when they first, when he first talked to her to find out if they're going to perform the exorcism, he throws some water on her, and, and she reacts like, "Ah, oh, it's burning, it's burning," and he's like, "That wasn't holy water; it was just tap water." So it makes me wonder, like, why did they act like that? Another interesting thing is when. <clears throat> she, I don't know. I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh boy. I still love it. I still think it's the greatest, scariest horror movie <clears throat> out there. So many reasons why. Let's look at some, I'm going to read this trivia right here. I'm going to read a lot of things. I decided I'm going to make this a long video, maybe like an hour long, <clears throat> because this is a finale. I'm going to read some comments and stuff from websites, whatever, maybe. Just stuff that I would do by myself anyways, because I'm such a nerd. I just like to read what people say about this stuff. So if you want to join me on this. But what was I going to say? That was interesting, too. Hmm so much. I don't know, let's just read the trivia. Maybe it'll come back to me. William Peter Blatley's novel The Exorcist spent 55 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list. Reagan's famous green vomit scene was actually performed by an adult actress, Aline Dietz, because makeup artist Dick Smith felt it was too difficult to rig for Blair. Hmm, interesting. So maybe the green vomit isn't, uh, CGI, but I just, I don't know. It didn't really look all that great to me where it's like spitting out. Like, it was kind of goofy, anyways, when it's all over the priest and like on his glasses and stuff. He's like, yeah. Most of the film was shot on sound stages in New York with exterior shot in and around Washington, D.C. Regan's bedroom was built inside a refrigerated set, which went down to 20 degrees below zero, allowing the actor's breath to show and giving the appearance of unearthly cold. Now see, today that would just be CGI. They'd be like, oh, we're not going to go through all the trouble of that. We're just going to just add in some fake breath. and That's dedication, man. 20 degrees below. An unearthly cold. That's what we got. During the Middle Ages, public exorcisms proved to be popular crowd pleasers and were often accompanied by severe torture victims many of who were only guilty of being non-christians or mentally ill were often branded as witches or sorcerers to justify the church's actions despite the initial fears of warner brothers concerning the necessarily graphic nature of some of the film scenes the ratings board of the mpaa awarded the movie a lenient r rating without a single cut This is interesting. It says the Roman ritual shown in The Exorcist was first published in 1614. Cautions its users to make sure the case cannot be explained by normal psychological means. This ritual is now rarely used and only in those cases where no other logical or psychological explanation can be determined. The Roman ritual is as follows. The litany. Psalm 54. Adjuration. Calling on God's help. Gospel readings, preparatory prayer, preparatory prayer for success, second exorcism commands the, to the evil spirit, another prayer for success, third and final exorcism similar to second and final prayer. And I, I remember something that the priest said, he said something like, uh, I don't know. Like, don't be disgusted by me because I'm a sinner or something. Like, he's like, 
my, the command doesn't come from me, it comes from Christ. Anyway, interesting, but let's go to Rotten Tomatoes. I'm sure. Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> what? I don't know. Why do I go to this website, man? The Exorcist. Oh, come on. Computer's being a little slow here because I'm trying to do all the stuff at the same time. But yeah, I wanted to look at some of the quotes, maybe, and some of the reviews. Reddit, too. Somebody posted, you know, what makes The Exorcist so great? Because I think some people will say it's better things and better words than I might say because I don't really take the time to write anything out here. Just going off the top of my mind. We're already at 40 minutes. We're going to look at a couple of these things. Hmm. Oh boy. Of course there's the flashes of the face on the screen too. We get that. That's kind of the jump scare kind of stuff. The X Supernatural theme with remarkable specialists. Scroll down now. <laughs> and an eerie atmosphere resulting in one of the scariest films of all time. It's an 83% by critics and 87 by the audience. A little higher on the audience than the critics, but Still, they're both pretty great. I mean, 80 to 90 out of 100. Can't argue with that. One of the most profitable horror movies ever made. This tale of an exorcism is based loosely on actual events. Okay, let's look at some of the reviews. These short... Uh, I wondered if they had... Uh, Roger Ebert. Anything? Let's see. I don't see anything by him or anything. Hmm. Simply the most terrifying movie ever made, even now. And it is some of the voices that comes from Regan and stuff that kind of creeps me out too, like the backwards English and stuff like that. I think that's still effective. They said when the priest is in the room with her and there's no music or anything, you're kind of in the scene. You kind of feel like you're in the priest's shoes. And it would be creepy to be, you know, in the room with a person like that. It's a product of its time in the best ways. Okay, Chris Stuckman. I mean, he's got his own. I'm surprised he shows up here on the uh, Rotten Tomatoes. He says, they went above and beyond. We have movies like The Exorcist to thank for so many other movies. Hmm. I was looking for a Roger Ebert or something. Uh, do I have to dig that deep to find something from him? Maybe he hated the movie. Let's see, top critics. Dang it, why is it being so slow? Oh boy. So yeah, I know a lot of people visit those stairs in New York where the house was. Or I mean, where they filmed it. Oh, uh, okay. I'm about to give up on this one. I don't... Oh, uh, Gene Siskel. <laughs> okay. That's good. Roger Ebert, he said, If movies are, among other things, opportunities for escapism, then The Exorcist is one of the most powerful ever made. Peter Travers from the Rolling Stones, see him everywhere. There's something elemental about The Exorcist. There's something elemental about The Exorcist. No, so I'm always going. I'm only going to read the positive reviews. 
Forget about all the other ones. They don't know what they're talking about. All right. Um, let's see here. See if I, I want to see if I can look at read from Reddit why some of the people said that it was so good. Oh, come on, what is this? No. No. Clicked on the wrong thing, I guess. Mmm. It's in the other room. This is being such a pain in the butt. It might just be easier for me to do that, really. Let's just do that, because... I'll be back. Hey, this guy away. This guy's gonna, he's gonna go by. Might be used every now and then. Alright. My pants are probably sagging. Oh my goodness. Okay. Just Okay. It's interesting. Can someone explain why the X considered such a masterpiece? Okay, so here's what somebody said on Reddit. I'm going to avoid Mount in the Seven Miracles more people scare because they don't scare me either. I judge horror movies only on their ability to scare me. Who has been watching horror regularly for 20 years? It's a real rarity for me, honestly. It's superbly crafted. Excellent ring, sound, set design, makeup, effects. It's well acted, strong and believable characters, an interesting and tragic character arc for Father Karras. From technic from a technical saint it's here to ninety five percent of the horror movies made even today. Hell, from a storyline standpoint standpoint standpoint, it's better than movies from every genre. Amazing soundtrack. Is jumping with the jump scare takes some time to build tension and then throws it at you. Most wonderfully heavy and foreboding. Again, M. Craftsmanship. And that's what I want to say, too. There are a little bit foreboding music, a little bit. Like, not even really, like, during the actual scenes that are creepy, but maybe leave them a little bit. There's some scenes where I think it's, like, violin or something. It's like, it's noise. Just very shortly. It's used very sparse. A lot of it is just no, no music. <sighs> okay. I'd like to mention that the spider walk down the steps wasn't added until the version you've never seen was released. I think, in addition, was one of the worst decisions they could have made. It was never used in the original. Uh, the, uh, watch the replay now. Let's look at you, OP. You're a horror fan. You've watched a lot of horror. As a result, you've more acclimated to the genre, more jaded. It takes more to scare you. You're told by countless people that The Exorcist is a great horror movie. Every made entry of ever and you got to thanking best horror movie well we'll see about that and let's not fool ourselves to distance yourself from what you're seeing on screen you know what i was thinking too you know i can see how some people say maybe it's like boring like compared to from dust till dawn or something where there's just crap flying at you from everywhere and guns going off and gore and stuff. It's kind of movie, you know, that's not what you get into watching The Exorcist 4. You want, it's really creepy, that's a great story. I mean, some of the quotes to see if it just kind of spawns any news or anything of what I just watched. Hmm. Oh. Look at a view of some members. It says, Seminal horror film. Simple story. Young possessed by the devil and must have him. Ellen Burst plays the girl's mother and is superlative to ways to help get her help. The exorcism scene is devilishly. This was a breakthrough film in its day, and still delivers the frights today. So it's over 40 years old and still remains one of the scariest movies of all time. A teenage girl comes, becomes possessed by a mysterious entity, and her mother seeks the help of two priests to save her daughter's version than the original. 
if you enjoy the modern possession of this, but the rest game. Horror class, what can I say? Yeah, Chris, was Chris her mom? Said you really don't want me to play, and then Regan, no, I do, Captain. <laughs> yeah, the power of Christ compels you, is the big line. There's a lot of a lot of vulgar language. That's what I was gonna say earlier when I lost track of thought is when Regan said uh, she did something, and the priest is like, "Why don't you make those uh, apps off your hands disappear or something?" And she's like, "That would be too much of power." And I was thinking earlier, like, what a bad man that he was in at home, and like everything else that's happened, how is that not a vulgar display of power? But then I was also, because the other priests, well, maybe, maybe it couldn't, but then, I, but then again, I mean, stuff it did, who knows. Demi. It was what the mother called the priest, the priest's name. He said, Demi, please, Demi. Father Kara. Hmm. For an exorcism. Okay, so the demon in Regan says, What an excellent exorcism. Father Kara says, Really? You would like that? And she says, Intensely. He says, But wouldn't that drive you up? Said us together. You and Regan? You and us. That's what, uh... <laughs> When Regan first like turns her head completely around to the mother, she says, "Do you do you know what she did? Your cunting daughter." I don't know if I thought that she said it like in the director's voice, killed down the stairs. So, and like later on, she comes to turn the director, and so, like I said, I kind of skipped that, but there is that police officer that's kind of he's kind of like watching what's going on. He runs in the house after the priest jumps out the window at the end. Um, it was like that somebody had to kill the director that had to be in or something on. It's kind of just like a... But he's still in too, that he's there. <laughs> Father Kareth says, where's Regan? She says, in here with us. How long are you going to be again? Until she rots in her... <laughs> okay, well, it's getting boring at this point for the video, but we've almost reached an hour. I'm just so over with. Thank God. Oh, 31 days. 31 days of more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do the yes chance. Yes. 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 <laughs> Oh, uh, gotta give this guy a hug. Oh, thank you. I'm not gonna give you a kiss, though. I'm sorry. That's another thing, I guess. Regan gives that Father Dyer a kiss at the end. He's his collar. Some kind of a hint that, you know, something sticks out to her about the priest or something. I don't know. Oh. Hmm. Oh, okay, I forgot creation church. So there's like a statue of the Virgin Mary, I think. And there's like horns through it, like three of them. So that's random weird thing that happens too so there's a lot of random thrown in there um, so yeah that's there and they're wondering like if those are connected uh, but I don't care I enjoyed watching it again I've watched it many more times and you know I'd really like to write down and put into more thought my 
why I really love this movie. I mean, a lot of this, it makes it great. The effects are great and amazing. The music and the lack of music is great and amazing. The story, the characters, the actors. <clears throat> and I think that I love that it's kind of somewhat faith-based, even though, you know, I'm not a Catholic, but, uh, and, you know, it's not like anything, but, you know, that the devil is a liar and stuff like that. Those are kind of like some basic truths that are in here. Um, you know, the fact that Christ overcome the devil. And, you know, demon possessions are a thing in the Bible. So, so I do love that aspect of it. But, I don't know, there's just, yeah. There's a lot to love about this movie. I forgot to help me. That's kind of a random thing, too, where the priest, they take the priest in at night to look at Regan, like, help, like, uh, like, a, like, scars. It's like, okay. All right, well, let's make it and end this. It's going to be it. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a good one. I hope you guys have a happy Halloween 2020.